welcome to this powerful leadership meeting and the message is so powerful in the sense that you will learn many things to grow your christian life and to grow other people around you i want you to sit back as you listen to apostle jesua shama and if you have not subscribed to this channel do so and also share with one another because this message is loaded by god for you for this very hour God bless you as you sit back to watch it and listen to God's voice through his servant. My spirit, may my God open your eyes. I say it again. May my God open your eyes. I prophesy to you from the depth of my spirit. May my God open your eyes. See what others are not seeing. Hear what others are not hearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. The ability to harness is leadership indeed. The ability to harness. The ability to harness. God can bring somebody who will be the greatest prayer leader who can die with you but because your eyes have not been washed with eyes out you can push them away and you get to a point in ministry where you say God I'm tired he said but I've sent five people to you you didn't have the eyes to see you were looking for partners you were looking for rich men learn this dear people God does not send people in their finished state he hides his glory and covers it with limitations and sends it to you do you know why so that you become part of their growth that is how you end their loyalty you cannot end the loyalty of a man who you did not invest in his growth are we together one man one day saw me and called me son i said no i respect you don't call me son that name is an expensive name what investment did you bring in my life that you want to call me son all these people who just judge because you are older than me does not mean i'm your son i must i must i must acknowledge that i'm your son what investment did you make in my life people just claim success and bully you and say look i no, no sir Are we together the ability to harness my question is how many gifts have you driven this year how many gifts that house boy you threw away he may not be very intelligent but he will never steal from you did you know that there was something locked up there you didn't have the patience to build him when you drove him somebody you see they say one man's food is another man's uh, poison say so why say unfortunately hallelujah so you drive someone and then before you know it someone will receive that someone you drove and say listen i don't mind building you sincerity is what i've been looking for and since this man looks for profit more than sincerity let him keep looking for profit while i build profit out of sincerity it is nobler to have sincerity first then you can build profit out of it how do you throw sincerity in search for profit? Hallelujah. Some of you have thrown some of the greatest gifts God gave you because you could not see. God gave you children and you threw all of them, speaking to them every day. I'm not proud of you. Look at this other person's child. At 21, they are already building a house. Shame on you. The way you are like this no brain no husband no money no nothing you have brought me shame and the children keep looking at you and they said all right since you have officially proved that you do not believe in us let's go and look for those who believe in us and then they come and meet someone who says you know what uh, i see that you have a lot of problems you just need to learn sit down this is what jesus did to them he gathered these ordinary men and said gentlemen sit down and watch what i make out of your life after three and a half years even though they ran away when he came back as a leader he still gathered them he said i understand even me i was afraid at some point i don't blame you and when they saw his ability to harness them they died 
died preserving the gospel do you want people to be able to die for you you think it's everybody that can die for you let trouble come that's when you know they never believed in you they were just with the ceremony of salary they never believed in you many leaders today are pained because they did not invest in people they only recruited people beyond recruiting you see I run my life organizationally speaking and ministerially speaking I turn everybody under my care it doesn't matter whether you are coming as an employer or you are coming as a son as a daughter it does not matter I give them a family mentality so that beyond money they know they are stakeholders in this vision I invest in them beyond what they receive if salary is the only thing that joins you which you say your driver you you are in trouble the day he has a choice to choose between him and you who will die that's when you will know that he loves himself more than you it is amazing how we magically believe as leaders that just because people say daddy mommy automatically they are loyal to you loyalty is an expensive product you buy it with years of investment not inheritance are we learning this morning? Yes, sir. I once met a gentleman, true story, I think two or three years ago. I met him. I had preached years ago in their university, somewhere in the Northeast, and he got born again in that conference. Later would become the president of, I think, the FCS or so, and then had long graduated, set up a real estate company, and then one day, he comes to me, I'm done with service, seeing people, and he says can you remember me sir? i said not exactly and he tells me that story and says today god has helped me i own a real estate company i just brought something to come and tell you thank you don't be annoyed that gentleman when he was getting saved he did not look like it but since you were part of his history you qualify to be part of his future if you were not there when i was hanging in the cross please when you see me sitting at the banquet don't come because you are certainly not invited i'm saying this so that many of us will start making adjustments now there are people you need to call to say come come i can still work on you come back come i can work on you um you are very hard working but i see that this tendency for stealing okay let's work on it go and fast for three days and come you are you are here for business but i will deal with this spirit of stealing the ability to extract evil and separate it and keep the good is mastery of leadership that you can see people and say ah this person has this this person has this you see that now and you are able to say you know what you you seem to be a very dishonest person but you are very diligent let's let's at least let's make an attempt to work on that dishonesty leadership is hard work at a governance level because your first mandate as a leader are we learning already is to harness and coordinate what does it mean to coordinate to put people around the areas of their strength so that you make a team out of them there are people who on a scale of one to ten their honesty level will never cross four but you need them so you know where to put them you never put them in accounts no even if you fast for one year the temptation on a scale of one to ten as a leader you have gauged them their honesty level would not when you preach about rapture it rises to four can you imagine that kind and yet you need these people in your life i wish i can tell you you will only having the best hands does not mean having the perfect hands you design the system that makes it the best by putting all kinds of people so you know where to put thomas don't drive him you will still need him you know where to put peter peter is not patient like john but he must be part of the apostles when you want to reveal certain things about divine realities go to john He's called the beloved. Peter is not called the beloved. Peter is a man of faith. He will deny you and come back and say sorry. John will stand with you on the cross. Do you know how to see these kinds of people? I hope I'm not wasting your time this morning. 
as a parent god gives you four children you can design a system around these four there is one who is very insecure but honest so that person has a tendency of gossiping what everybody is doing in a way to secure you as a you know the person the person is not hard working but you can trust the person with information there is one who does not care about anybody including you the parent they want to make it they love you but they will not tell you they feel embarrassed to be weak there is another who does not care really wherever they are just like water you put them in a bowl they look like a bowl you put them in a plate they look like a plate then there is another one that satan wants to take advantage of your ability to sit down and say i can build a team out of this this one has a strength of speaking he just does not have the ability to coordinate himself so my response to this person is to give the person more confidence because that is his deficiency this one does not need motivation he's self-motivated what he needs is to create limits to his passion this is leadership you are literally designing the glory of god in lives <laughs> hallelujah Thank you. Listen, don't you think ministry is all about preaching? You can preach and die after your preaching because a wrongly constructed leadership structure will pierce you with many sorrows. It is my assignment. I can tell you as many as my people are, I can write books on almost every one of them. I know their strengths and their limitations. I know what they can do and cannot do. Rather than driving them, you build a team around them. You know that this person, there are people who are not intelligent, but they are obedient. If you put them in an area of creativity, you have lost it. But give them instructions, they will obey to the latter. Those guys should not be heads of units. But you put them in the most active position within the department. They will go to the market and buy clothes. They will bargain for one hour to save the department money. There are others who don't have that time hallelujah there are those who will you give them 10 naira they will tell you i use one naira i'm so sorry i was thirsty i used one cobble out of that one naira to take water i will return it they are that meticulous there are others when you give them 100 naira just know that even if you send them to buy something of 30 naira accept the rest as a seed just focus on the results but the change for sure will not return Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let me finish. So the first mandate of a leader from a governance standpoint is the ability to harness and coordinate. Write that down. That's number one harness and coordinate say harness say coordinate harness and coordinate that harness part we're going to pray it because in the name of jesus your eyes must see your eyes must see your eyes must see see what others are not seeing see what others are not seeing see what others are not seeing i know someone who during COVID in South Africa, when other people is an evil man, he became literally a billionaire without exaggeration. Because during COVID, he knew that eventually they will have to meet people who will buy this um, um, what they call the thing, the nose mask. Yes, the face mask. And when other people were just trying to smuggle at a retail level, he went to the government and said, Listen. This is what I can design for you. There are so many people I can I can be sure to bring you, whether from China or wherever. Had an intelligent negotiation with them, and then they signed the contract. He became one of the few main suppliers. This nose mask you see. When the man called me and said it, I said, Ah, this man. I said this. To be honest with you, I said this evil people. What grace did God give them like this? Whereas there was someone there shouting and saying, God, will you not change my life? 
and God is saying, are you not seeing? I gave you eyes different from hands so that you can see. If Lot saw what Abraham saw, he would not go to Sodom and Gomorrah. He looked around and did not see anything and went and settled near Sodom. And God told Abraham, he said, now lift your eyes northward, turn, not, uh, southward, as far as your eyes can see. Is it alright if I ask you to lay your hands prophetically on your eyes and say, Lord, open my eyes to people. Open my eyes to mantles. Open my eyes to opportunities. What is my wife carrying that I'm not seeing? What is my child carrying that I'm not seeing? What are my fellowship people carrying that I'm not seeing? What is House on the Rock carrying that I'm not seeing? What is Reverend Edwin carrying that I'm not seeing? What is my business carrying that I'm not seeing? What could be that is not yet? Oh God, open my eyes to see it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Harness and coordinate the ability to see potentials even when they have not become. The ability to see potentials when they have not become. Hallelujah. And this is what I'm doing even in our ministry. Training leaders, the current leaders to be able to see others. You cannot build a global ministry when you don't train people to see. You have to train. The ability to see can be taught. That if I look at you right now, I should be able to get any pastor with all due respect in House on the Rock here and say, build me three teams and you can reproduce the results because of your ability to see. And from the people seated here, don't go outside. Just interact with the people and look for five people for me. I did something not too long. I, while we're preparing, I'd not been to my village for over 20 years. And so like two, three years ago, I decided to go there and put a crusade. And among the people who were setting up, there was a young man that I kept looking at. Immediately I saw, I saw my next leader. And the guy was involved in the finances. He was very accountable. He was doing what he was doing. And I was smiling. That's leadership. And you go back to God and say, this is this. I carried this young man from the village, brought him to Abuja for one year, and I trained him. I now sent him back to go and raise 25 other people. Listen, let me tell you what this gentleman did. I don't know if I could do it. I had to travel a few weeks down and ask them to come. The kind he turned these 25 people into, you know, the foxes of Samson. This gentleman went with this spirit. I never got an auditorium, got everything, all the programs, charity, welfare, boreholes, everything. I just send the resources and tell him, send me updates. One year. If you have not been able to raise anybody, you are not a leader. Do you know what I mean to raise? Not to see someone almost finishing, then you just add icing on the cake. To raise from ground up. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. It is the reason why you find campus fellowships on fire. Then a set will now graduate. And have you seen that happen in campuses? A group of vibrant people is like a set that are men of fire. And when all of them are in final year, the campus people start crying because they focus, they focus on impact, which was good, but they did not focus on raising others. I'm coming there. And you find out that as soon as they graduate, the campus goes down spiritually or the business goes down spiritually so you had three people running your store and you were netting 10 million 100 million per annum 1 billion per annum and you did not add other people now you send the first competent person to say port Harcourt, the second competent person to lagos you are left alone and now all the other people who are there are thieves because you did not take the time to build. Now you are doing an emergency response system and your business is going down. Can I tell you the truth? This is the mistake with all due respect of the West. They ignored raising people. They focused on those who were already vibrant, who were products of crusades of men like Billy Graham and the rest. 
and the young people they raised now did not know that they were supposed to raise others again i'm praying for you that you don't be carried away by your current success but that you master the art of investing and raising people shout a loud amen. amen let me give you number two quickly what is the second mandate of leaders to inspire and to influence the second mandate of all leaders organizationally speaking is to inspire and to influence and you do that by using your results anybody who cannot inspire cannot be a leader anybody who cannot inspire what does it mean to inspire to inspire means to motivate to inspire means to create a picture before those who follow you and i hope you know that even the holy spirit inspires men Elihu said in chapter 32 of Job, remember, there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty, the inspiration other versions will use, make it men of understanding. Who can look at your life today and go back on a three days retreat because of something they saw? Who can look at your life today and make up their minds that I will never live a careless life again. Your life is supposed to be a living epistle. The kind of result you command and produce from a spiritual standpoint, from a financial standpoint, from an intellectual standpoint. That when you speak to people, they are blessed by whatever subject you are discussing. But then they also study your thought processes and it compels them to go back and work on themselves. Are we together? That's right. Many things should happen when people come to church. Receiving the word as we call it should just be one of the many things that happen. People should be greatly inspired. Hallelujah. Yeah. Greatly inspired. All wise greatly inspired so as you come from the worship team as you are leading a song of worship someone who has the mandate of god to be a worshiper while they are enjoying the song they are seeing your rehearsal they are seeing your excellence and someone makes up his mind and says that last embarrassment in the ministration it will be the last forever i am learning by this person so they look forward to coming to church yes to hear pastor edwin but before then, they want to hear this person. Have you noticed that there are certain people, congregations are happy when they come. When they come up. It is not politics, it's inspiration. Every time they come, they are happy. Let's hear what he's going to say now. Lesson number next. What do I have to learn in the five minutes? He's coming to take offering. He's coming, maybe a welcome note. He's coming to teach. And they know that they will be inspired always. Don't downplay the passion of people to be inspired. If you don't inspire people, they will respect you, but they will not follow you. You can inspire a generation. This is the whole idea of being an influencer. Unfortunately, that concept is always to the negative, sadly. An influencer is not someone on social media. An influencer is someone whose life is so dexterous, whose results is so compelling, that people will want to adopt first your philosophies because you represent a future they desire. May you become such a one in the name of Jesus Christ. Becoming an inspiration demands that you be competent. Please write it down. Becoming an inspiration demands that you be competent. At every level of your growth, you can be the best current version of yourself. If you are a preacher and you are coming to the pulpit to preach, for God's sake, do your homework. Don't come on the pulpit and say, don't worry. Whatever you hear, just receive it like that. Now, even if what you are saying is the truth, you are not inspiring. As a leader, you don't come and display weakness before your people. You see, you don't display weakness and say, I'm being real. You have to be careful. Because they look at you and they lose confidence in you. Everybody wants to follow a person. Now, write this down, please. Psychologically speaking, there are six psychological needs that every man 
every man craves for can i read the list for you this is proven now we're, we're in a leadership meeting so am i am i at, at liberty to do that number one the greatest psychological need of all men six of them together one is the need for security please write it down men will do anything to find security and if you are a leader that can give them a template and a vision of security spiritual security financial security anything that gives them security what is security the ability to minimize or if possible drive their fears and their confusions security number two variety people like newness mass communication thrives on this when you are watching a football match even though you know it will remain on the internet there forever you still want to be live and you can pay to be live breaking news breaks because it is new am i right on that nobody visits last week news with the kind of passion they have for today's news now everybody wants to know what is happening between israel and hamas and all of that you see now variety it is the reason why god gave man creativity so that you can bring various forms of delivering the same result are we together is the reason why you can see a toyota car among your car collections then you go and buy lexus even by the same company then you go and buy mercedes you but they are all cars after all they all move you so why the passion for that variety how come you have a black cloth a white one then you have a green one and you still plan to buy a red one maybe after this conference am i right on that so what 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 and you will you will not agree that it is lost you call it variety is that true so all men crave for variety number three all men crave for significance this is particularly unique with the male gender significance why will i quarrel you when you call me brother joshua selman why do i get angry i say my friend don't call me brother is brother an insult brother is not an arm robber so why am i angry that you said brother jo <laughs> like some of you i remember many years ago I, I, where did i go to preach for god's sake and they brought one guy one musician and they called him one kind of name when he came up he rebuked the people and he said i am not this is i am pastor this ah i said my friend you would have just ministered and gone to sit down you have you have closed the heavens that hallelujah significance to know that you matter to know that you count don't downplay people's sense of significance when i came in i saw and thanks to reverend edwin and the entire leadership the warmth and the love right from the airport the hospitality and all that i've received since i came here very phenomenal and for this i am grateful but it's significance hallelujah can i tell you people do not care what you know until they know that you care they don't care what revelation what greek and hebrew by the time you make people feel stupid and you make them feel less of themselves they will love you but you will never earn their loyalty is someone growing today significance so we need to be careful and manage the way we speak to people and the way we generally operate with people knowing that the moment people feel insignificant around you there is a negative energy that comes from you to them there's a pungency that comes from you to them they will run away every time they see you and they will never support anything you are part of are we learning number four love and acceptance the fourth psychological need of every body including you who is writing is love and acceptance the very reason people join occultic societies you interview many people who join occultic societies they will tell you daddy did not believe in me mommy did not believe in me is the reason why sadly we are losing our young ladies and even the gentlemen to all kinds of ungodly systems because the love and acceptance did you know that the worst thing that can happen to any man is called rejection rejection is to be given a perception that you are not needed within a space it's a terrible thing hallelujah yeah it's a terrible thing 
Rejection is so, is so serious that the Bible gives you a counsel that when you get to a place, sit at the back first. Just sit at the back there to save yourself shame. If you are worthy of honor, they will usher you to the front. But if you come and sit at the front and they now transport you gently to the back, it will be a memory you will have for a long time. Rejection is a terrible thing. Hallelujah. Many children today grow with all kinds of things. They, they hate people and they hurt others because they grew up with this rejection that they got from parents. Sadly, some of those parents were also preachers. Saving the world but destroying their own home. So you call your child a stupid, useless boy, very ugly girl. I don't think any man will marry you. You are such a stupid person. You are taking the, the least position in class. And then they are absorbing these things. Absorbing these things. Absorbing these things. By the time they become teenagers, any gentleman who says, Wow, you mean there's such a lady in this world and have I been blind? You know how men talk. The lady knows that this boy is going to destroy her but she cannot resist him because he's the only voice that ministers love and acceptance hallelujah are we learning number what now number five growth the fifth psychological need of everybody is the need for growth what does it mean to grow to become to evolve superior versions of yourself Mother, when you give birth to a baby, it will be unfair to expect that baby to begin to walk and talk after two months. That would be a miracle, I think. Am I right on that? But after a year or two, perhaps three years, and the child is not walking, not talking, not coordinating himself, you become disturbed because we expect growth. Even the baby expects growth. When you plant anything, corn, or yam, millet, whatever it is, you give it time. But with time, you want to see evidences of growth. Am I right on that? So human beings crave for growth. That's why when we write exams and the results come out, when we pass, we rejoice. Because it means growth. More than success, it means